What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we get to tear down our brand new Chevy 350 engine. That's right, this beautiful machine behind me is getting torn almost all the way back down to the block today because if you haven't seen the other videos, it doesn't run. And as we're fixing the problems that cause it not to run, we're also gonna be upgrading a few of the parts that we put in, even though everything is pretty much brand new. So today we're gonna start by taking the top end of the engine apart to take some weight off of it so we can freely rotate it around and pull all of the rest of the components off as well. Now to keep everything organized on the engine, we've got this table here laid out with some plastic over it to help keep everything clean as we're taking it off the engine. We're also gonna try and keep it organized and make sure that nothing gets lost. We already have a couple parts laid out right over here from the small things that I've pulled off of it already, but all the major components are gonna go right over here, make sure they're safe, not damaged, while we are rebuilding the engine the second time. So we're gonna throw some gloves on and get right into tearing this engine apart. So obviously we're gonna start from the top and move down, which means we have to take the carburetor off first. Thankfully I left all of these little nuts here finger tight because we weren't actually trying to start the engine when we realized it was broken. So I don't wanna break this fuel line or disconnect the fuel lines from down here. They're all on there really tightly. So I think I'm just gonna to try to take the carburetor and the fuel pump off all in one assembly with all of the hoses still connected here. We also have like a plumbed in fuel filter here that I don't wanna take off and lose. So I'm gonna take the fuel pump off and see if I can just move it all at once. All right, we got our fuel pump off, and now we're gonna be pulling the carb off. Thankfully, these come off very easily, just a couple bolts, and we'll take them and put them over on our bench. Okay, we got the carbon fuel pump off. Now we gotta pull off this small little backing plate here. And sometimes these backing plates get a little stuck on there from the silicon, so we're just gonna give a little tap with the screwdriver here. There we go, separates it. Peel it off nice and easy. All right, next up we're gonna be pulling the exhaust manifolds off. These are the old rusty ones from the original engine. They were only on here to try and protect the spark plug wires when we ran it for the first time, but we never even got there. So they are coming back off now. Now, you definitely don't wanna do this when you're assembling an engine, but I brought out my impact driver to help us disassemble this a little bit quicker. You still wanna get the bolts initially loosened with a normal wrench, but once they are loosened up, you can use the driver to just pull them the rest of the way out. Now we're gonna do the same thing on this side. All right, next off we're pulling our distributor out, which requires us to loosen the little distributor bolt, bolt back here, which actually is not super tight at all. Now make sure you grab your retaining bracket with that bolt as well, keep them together. And now, the distributor just lifts straight out. All right, our next order of business here is gonna be taking the intake manifold off. Now this one does have a little silicon on parts of it and on the china walls here, so we're gonna to have to probably give it a little bonk to get it loosened up, but let's take these bolts off first. Again, we're gonna use the wrench to just get these loosened up. See, the cool part about having literally just put this entire engine together is I know every single component like the back of my hand now because it's all fresh in my mind. I'm choosing to be positive about this process. Nothing negative here. All right, all the bolts are out. Let's see if it wants to just pull up. Nope. So we're gonna give it a little tappy tap. There we go. Pops right up, and time to pull the intake manifold off. Woohoo! Jeez, don't you guys remember when we just put this on? <laughs> I'm not quite sure why, but this intake manifold gasket here was all wobbly. It's not like fully flat on the face, even though all the bolt holes line up. That can't be good. So we're just gonna pull that back off. Gross. Wow, look at that, it barely looks like an engine anymore. I'm choosing to be positive about this process. And now we gotta run through and make sure all of these rockers get pulled off. Which we already loosened all of them up when we did our kind of pre-tear down of the engine, took the oil pan off and all that. So these are nice and loose. 
Doesn't make a huge difference at this point whether we use the impact or not since they're already loose. All right, I'm moving back to the socket because I keep pulling the studs out of the heads. And I really don't want to do that. All the rockers can come off now. And don't worry, we are going to do a full head teardown on these. We're gonna replace all the push rods, all the springs, the retaining clips, the valves, you name it. It's all getting wiped. Now we'll pull the push rods out. And we're gonna go in here with our magnet and see if we can't pull these lifters out as well. There's one. All right, now that one side is pretty much disassembled, we can go ahead and start pulling the head bolts off and hopefully none of them break as we pull these out. And again, pulling out the impact driver. Just pull these the rest of the way out. I found the fuel rod. And again, not super bothered using the impact driver on these because all these head bolts are being replaced with ARP bolts. Not these crappy, awful, low quality, good for nothing bolts. All right, now we're gonna pull the head off. Give it a little love tap under there. If everything is right, this will just lift right off. Ta-da! All right, quick pause. This is what we've got going on now on our table. All of our parts are getting lined up nice and clean there, keeping everything super organized. We still have to pull the second head off and then we're gonna pull the connecting rods, the crankshaft, and then it'll basically just be down to the block again. We do still have to pull the timing chain cover, the harmonic balancer, those small little things, which are not necessarily fun to do, but are pretty easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the second head off and I'll jump back in with you guys once we're on to the next thing. Ta-da! All right, before I clean this up, I wanna show you guys, there's a ton of oil in this cylinder. I think that's number six, full of oil. All of the other cylinders have a little bit of oil in them as well. These pistons are coming back out anyway, but kinda of weird. And it's even weirder considering that none of these pistons have any oil in them. These are basically bone dry. So I don't know what was going on on that left side there, but we may have to look into that a little bit. All right, next up on our teardown is gonna be taking the timing chain cover and the harmonic balancer off here. So we gotta start by loosening this bolt here, which is a lot easier said than done. And to make removing the harmonic balancer just a hair easier, I'm gonna flip the whole engine upside down here because then we can just jam the crankshaft instead of fighting with the harmonic balancer. I'm gonna take a rubber mallet here, stick it down inside with the crank, and as we rotate, now the crank is jammed, and we can pull the bolt off super, super easy here. So for the next part, I like to reinstall the bolt without the washer on it, and just get it in there fairly tight. And then we're gonna use a harmonic balancer removal tool, which is basically just one really long threaded piece, and then you've got three screws that screw into the harmonic balancer. So I'm gonna show you how that works here. That middle piece is gonna rest right on the bolt and these screws are gonna go through the three legs here that allow this to fit over the balancer. So what you're gonna to wanna to do now is tighten these bolts down just a hair, make sure that they are tightly in the balancer and as even and straight as possible. And then we're gonna start tightening up the big one. And as we tighten this, It'll start pulling the balancer off using the bolt 
as the pressure point instead of the threads on the inside where the bolt otherwise would be. And there we go. Harmonic balancer comes clean off. Now we just go ahead and pull that bolt back out. And there we go. Now that the harmonic balancer is off, we're gonna go ahead and pull the timing chain cover off. Again, these aren't torqued super tight, so I'm just gonna use the impact driver. And with a little yank, she'll come right off. I can't stress this enough. Your engine likely will not look like this when you pull it apart. I literally just put this engine together about a week ago, so there's no time for dirt or debris to build up inside of it. Yours is probably gonna be a lot greasier, a lot more disgusting, a lot less clean. So just be careful, be on the lookout for that. Your engine is not gonna look this clean. Next up, we're pulling the timing gears off. When removing the timing chain, you're just gonna pull on the cam gear and it'll kind of slide out. Then you can slacken up the crank gear, and there you go. Now I'm actually gonna put two of my timing gear bolts back in to give me something to hold on to the cam with because we are pulling the cam as well. This one's pretty easy. Just slides out. All right, next we're gonna start taking apart the actual rotating assembly. So we're gonna disconnect the rod caps. We already got our main caps off the crankshaft. And as we do, we wanna make sure that our pistons are not just falling out onto the ground. So be careful as you're disconnecting them. Make sure they don't slide, make sure they don't fall and get damaged. Keep a little hand under there, make sure they don't hit the ground. You wanna make sure that your nuts do not fall down inside of the engine as you're doing this. That would definitely not be good. There we go. If you're having a hard time getting your rod caps separated from the rods, put a nut back on one of these little bolts and then hit it with a rubber mallet and it'll kind of separate the two pieces from each other. You can pull the bearing off. All right, now that all the pistons are out, we're gonna take the starter off. And this one's just two little bolts here. Doesn't take much to get it off. Do be careful with it though, because it is super heavy. And last, but certainly not least, the problem child of this whole build, the crankshaft. Which I'm gonna pull out with the flex plate on. And now that we got the crank itself out, we can actually tap these bearings out which are really the problem on this build because they are just garbage. And I don't know how well the camera is gonna pick this up, but you can already kind of see some scratches on these bearings. And with a standard size crankshaft and standard size bearings, there should not be damage to the bearings already. Every single one of them kind of looks like this. This is the big main bearing. You can kind of see it the best here. Those horizontal scratches, there we go. You can see it in the sun with that shine there, how it's scratching on the inside there. Definitely just really poor quality parts here. What a shame. But on a much more positive note, we were able to get that entire teardown done in just over two hours. I'm super happy that it didn't take too long because I basically just reversed two months of progress in two hours, which is really sad, but I do think it's gonna be a lot easier to put it back together now that I know exactly what I'm doing. And I'm left with this super cool table full of engine parts. Everything is laid out and organized here. The crank is not going to be staying there because it is kind of on an angle. So that's just gonna go on the floor to make sure it doesn't warp. Also, while the crank is out this time, I'm gonna go ahead and polish all of the crank journals. Just make sure that there's nothing on those directly that could be causing interference with the bearings. And then once all of our new parts get in, we'll be taking all this stuff 
and thrown it back into the engine, which at this point is just a sad little empty block. There's not much to it at this point. Definitely looking a little bit sad right now, but don't worry, you'll be back together in no time. And all this dirt, we're gonna have to get cleaned off of you off that fresh new paint job. So the next part of this process is we're gonna be tearing down the heads themselves, replacing all of the valves, the springs, the push rods, the retaining clips, every single piece of those is getting replaced, except the metal itself, which is actually fairly decent condition. Just all of the parts inside of it are not at all what was advertised to me. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the teardown video. If you learned something along the way, make sure and let me know in the comments below. If I did something wrong along the way, also make sure and let me know in the comments below so I don't make the same mistake next time. And otherwise, thank you guys so much for joining me along for this crazy ride so far. If you wanna see how we got to this point, go and check out some of the older videos in the series. I promise you will enjoy them. It's been a crazy, crazy trip up until this point. And I hope you guys all enjoy and stick around with me for the next couple videos as we go ahead and rebuild this engine properly for the second time.